Hello folks. So in the last video, I got as far as adding in some damage being taken by this castle and actually over time, as it takes more and more damage, the image changes and it gets broken up. I also replaced the cursor with this little crosshair just to make it look a bit better. So what I want to do in this video is add in more enemies. At the moment, I'm manually creating that first enemy. So within this code here, uh, below all my classes, I have a section where I just manually create an enemy and that's basically him, he just goes on his way. I don't really want that, I want to be able to automate this so that each level, a whole bunch of enemies are generated and I just keep attacking the castle because that way I can control how difficult it's going to be. So, first of all, I wanna know how many enemies I'm gonna create each level. So let's go up to where I've got my variables being defined and just add a couple more. So let's say down here, define game variables and the first one I want is, well, how many enemies do I want to create? So I'll say max underscore enemies. And I'll set us to just 10 to start with. So I want to create 10, en well, 10 enemies per level. The other thing I need is some kind of timer. I don't want to create all 10 at the same time. So like I did with the animations and with the attacking code, I'm going to set a timer and a cooldown. So let's say enemy underscore timer equals 1000. So that's 1000 milliseconds, meaning that every second I can create another enemy. And then I need to know when was the last time I created one. Last enemy equals pygame.time.get underscore ticks. And this just takes a timestamp of when the game was basically, as soon as the game runs, it takes a timestamp and it's gonna start counting from there. So when I reach this 1000 milliseconds timer, it's going to create an enemy and reset the timer for me. And the one last variable I want is enemies underscore alive. So I want to know how many of those guys are actually alive and how many have been killed. So now I can go into the game loop down here and I can generate or I can automate this enemy generation. So above my game loop at the moment, I've created an enemy manually. So let's just get rid of this. I'll just uh, copy it down so I can save it and put it down below. And I've got all of my update sections happening. So below all of these updates, uh, but above the event handler, I'm gonna have a section which is going to create the enemies for me. I'll add a little comment first of all, create enemies. And then remember I set that little limit of how many enemies I can have. And I think it was max enemies. So first of all, I wanna say uh, check if max number of enemies has been reached. So as long as I've not generated all the enemies that I want within the level, I'll keep making them. So I can say if the length of the enemy underscore group, so basically how many enemies I've already created, if that is less than max enemies, well, then that means that I still have enemies to create. So let's create more. And to create them, I pasted that code uh, from above to create them, I just say enemy, I can give it this underscore one now. I create an instance, so I say enemy, exactly the same code as before, uh, but now instead of creating them all the way over at x coordinate 400, I'll start them at 100. Actually, no, I want them to be off the screen, so let's say minus 100, so they'll be generated off the game window and then they'll walk onto the screen, That's that'll be a bit better. And then once it's created, I add it into my enemy group. So remember this enemy class, I've got this separate here. I've got this code for the enemy code, uh, enemy class here. It takes a few arguments, the health, uh, which I've put in here from that list. So my enemy's health, the enemy animation, then it's the X coordinate, Y coordinate, and then the speed at which they walk. So that's all the arguments there. And then once that's done, I put them into this enemy sprite group that I've got. So that should allow me to create 10 enemies straight away. So if I run this code, they created and then you can see they walked onto the screen so they, they did appear there was a little delay because they appeared on the left and then they slowly walked on a uh, slight problem though <laughs> that's all 10 enemies all together in one place not ideal for what i'm trying to do so that's where that timer comes in i need to be able to stagger the creation of these so rather than instantly creating one i'll add another if statement say if pygame dot time dot get ticks so basically what is the time right now minus last underscore enemy, so minus the time the last enemy was created. And if that's greater than the enemy timer, well, that means that a second has passed. So I can create an enemy now. 
So let's indent all of this bit. And now, rather than creating a whole bunch, I should be getting one at a time. But I didn't. That's because I missed something uh, in here. Once an enemy is created, I need to make sure that I reset that timer. So let's say reset enemy timer. And now this variable here, last enemy, when the last one was created, well, it's just been created. So the time is right now. So I'll say pygame dot time dot get underscore ticks. So that resets the one second timer for the next one. Uh, hopefully that comes out in a better result. There's one guy, there's another one, and another one, and that's it. They're all just going to be staggered one second apart from each other. And what should happen, because they all have in the, they're all independent instances, they all control themselves differently. So one of them can reach here, uh, can maybe shoot one of them and kill them. The rest all just play their own act. So they, they all do their own thing, basically. Okay, so that's working pretty well now, but it's kind of basic. For a start, I'm creating 10 enemies every time. And that's going to become really boring and pretty easy because the challenge is not increasing after you kill them. So if I kill all these guys and I add in code to create another 10, well, it's just the same thing over and over. What I actually want to happen is that once I've killed all 10 of these guys, then I detect that they're all dead, the level is over, and then I move on to the next level, which is going to be a little bit harder. So I need to add all that in as well. So if I go back up to the top where I've got this game variable section, I'll add in a couple more variables. The first one is the level. So let's say that I start on level one and then each time I kill the enemies, I move on to the next level. Well, oops, the level difficulty then should start off at zero. So I'll say level difficulty, wow, uh, level difficulty is zero. And that's essentially my variable for what the difficulty is right now. As soon as I create an enemy, that difficulty increases because the level just got harder. There's another enemy on the screen. I want a target difficulty as well. So I'll say target underscore difficulty and I'll set this to 1000. So basically, I'm going to just keep creating enemies, keep increasing the level difficulty as soon as an enemy is created. And then when I get to this target, well, that basically says that this level is hard enough. Don't need to create any more enemies. So for that, I've got enough code to now start changing the way these enemies are created. Rather than saying max enemies and limiting it to 10 every time, I'm not going to have a limit. It's going to be determined by how hard this level is. So I go back down to where I'm creating them within the game loop, and I just tweak that part of the code here. So now I'm not looking at how many enemies I've created. I'm now saying, what is the current level difficulty, i.e. how many enemies have I generated already? And if that level difficulty is less than what I'm aiming for, for this level, then continue with the code as before. Keep creating them and adding them to the group. But every time I create an enemy, I want to increase the current difficulty to match that. So increase level difficulty by enemy health. So we say level underscore difficulty has just been increased by the enemy health of, well, the health of the enemy that I have just created. So when I created that enemy, I passed in a health here and that's what the level, uh, that's how much harder the level has just become. So actually, let's just debug this. Let's print level underscore difficulty. And this will be able to, this will allow me to keep track of what's going on. So it's come to 75, 150, 225, 300. So it's going up every time by 75 because that's how much health each of these guys has. Now the target was a thousand. So I'm actually going to end up with more than 10. I'm going to end up with a whole bunch of them. But now I've hit 1050. That is greater than a thousand. So no more of them are coming. So if I killed all these guys and completed the level, then I would move on to the next one and that's gonna be a little bit harder than the previous one. So this is working well. Let's get rid of that section here. So what I can do next, I mean, if you look at it, it's just gonna be a bunch of these knights. They all have 75 health. So pretty much every time this comes out, there's gonna be the same amount of them. There's no variation. Well, the way I've structured the code, if I come back up to where I'm loading in all of these animations, there's a reason why this was so, I don't know, kind of complicated. It was because I wanted to set it up in such a way that I can easily add in more enemies just by typing more of them into this list. The rest of it doesn't need to change. It takes care of that automatically because it already has all of this uh, conditional stuff in here. It's got all these format in here. So if I go into my images folder where all of these are being loaded from and then the images uh, enemies subfolder, you can see I've got, oh, let's minimize that. I've got goblin, knight, purple goblin and red goblin. So I can add them in here, just continuing this list. So I can say next one is a goblin. Then after that is a purple goblin. 
So I was very creative when I was coming up with these names. And then a red goblin. Now I need to make the enemy healths match up as well. So I need these to correspond to what's going on up here. I need it to be the same length and also to tie in. So the knight's got 75 health. Well, then I need to add in the health for all the other guys as well. And the next one I want is going to be 100. So the goblin will have 100 health. Red goblin will have 125. The purple goblin is going to be the strongest of the lot at 150 health. But remember, the health is what determines the level of difficulty. So if you're aiming for 1,000, then you're going to need more knights than red goblins, basically, to, to reach that same point. But red goblins are going to be harder to kill because you still only do 25 damage every time you shoot. So now, if I run this, I just want to check that it still loads correctly. It took a little bit longer to load, you noticed, because there's more images now to load in. I'm still only creating a whole bunch of knights. Nothing has changed. The reason for that is if I go back down to... I know it's starting to get a bit long now to scroll up and down. If I come down to here where I'm creating the enemies, I'm still only accessing the first position. So I'm accessing index 0. Well, that's always going to be the knight because that's what's at index 0. What I actually want to do is randomize this. So rather than specifying a number, I want to generate a random integer. The Python has the random module uh, built into it, so I just need to import it here. So just under math, I'm going to say, oops, uh, import random. And now I can access different kind of random uh, processes and random functions from this module. So we come back down here where I'm creating the enemies. And I just changed the code a little bit. So underneath where I've got cre uh, create enemy, before I actually create an instance, I want to randomize a number. I want to pick a number between, uh, well, between, I suppose, the, the entire length of that list, right? So I say E for enemy is equal to random, which is the name of that module, dot rand int. And the integer that I want is going to be in the range of zero. So that's my indices here. So it's between zero and the length of the list. So enemy underscore types uh, minus one. So that's basically going to say how long is that enemy's list. Go up here, enemy types. Well, I've got one, two, three, four. But remember, this is actually accessed at index three. So that's why I added a negative one at the end of that. So it's going to give me a random number between zero and three, and that will correspond to any one of these four indices. So now that I've got this random number generated, I can replace this with an E. I need to make sure that I capture all of them. So I replace that one, that one, and that one, and I don't think there was any more further on, no. So now it's exactly the same, but there's going to be a random number that's going to determine which enemy is being created. And uh, just to verify everything's working correctly, let's add this print statement back in. Level difficulty. So if I run this now, I create an enemy. So the first one was a knight, second one was a knight, but look, the next one was the red goblin. So the health uh, the level of difficulty is changing more quickly. So now I've ended up with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I still got 10 enemies, but if I keep keep replaying this, I might get a different number of enemies because some of them have more health and therefore are contributing more to the difficulty of the level. So how many this time? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, two. Oh, okay. Uh, it's demonstration not worked very well. I've still ended up with 10 each time. But the idea is that as I go up through each level, although at the moment I haven't coded that in, when I kill them all, I'm going to detect that the level is complete. And at that point, I'm going to increase the difficulty for the next level. So the idea is that you're going to get not only more enemies, but you're going to end up getting tougher enemies as the game goes on. So that's going to be the next thing to add in, but I'm going to do that in a future video. So for now, if you found this useful, then please do leave a like and feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.